Yeah, indeed, that's where I am. Thanks very much, Ayanda. Talking all things trees this morning, and I have to tell you, it's just been it's been very, very interesting. It's not something we really focus in on. Have a look what's happening outside, live at the moment. You can see uh, the banners out there. Stop forest crime in the Congo Basin. Now, you'll know that this is the very, very first time that uh, this Congress is actually being held in South Africa, well, in the African continent, and, and the reality is, is that all issues facing the continent are going to come up here. And you can already see Greenpeace standing outside with their banners expressing uh, some of their worries for the continent and there, the Congo Basin coming under the spotlight. But communities depend wholly on forests for their livelihoods, for uh, their food, for money to survive. And if uh, it gets to a point where you keep on chopping down these forests, it's going to be a huge problem. Now, there hasn't really ever been a accurate record of the kinds of trees and the magnificent trees that we have right here in South Africa. And it's something that uh, a couple has actually gone out and done. And their name is Enrico and Erna Liebenberg. Now, what they did is that they went out and, uh, and did a book called We Are the Champions and the Champion Trees of South Africa, basically talking about them, traveled around the whole country, having a look at the different kinds of trees and forests that we have and documenting them, putting the coordinates that you can actually buy in this book, go out there and see them for yourselves. Now, joining me now is the co-author of this book, Enrico Liebenberg, to tell us a little bit more about this journey and some of the interesting trees and things that you saw along this way. Good to have you on the program. Welcome to Morning Live. Thank you, Leanne. Appreciate it and gladly talk to you about the champion trees and some of the exceptional ones. Um, every time we open the book, we need to make up our minds which is our favorite photos. Sure. And it varies from a, a milkwood tree in the dunes outside Still Bay to a big fat uh, wild fig tree on the banks of the Tugela River. Yeah. And the the interesting aspect of these trees in their variety is that the one is on private land, very well known by the owner, very well documented, and the other stands in the middle of a village where nobody actually pays any attention to it, yeah. and the cattle rest underneath it. <laughs> and this specific tree, the fig tree, had a circumference of something like 23 meters wow. of the trunk, but it died away, and uh, that was at some stage used by the local community as a small crawl. You could probably fit eight or 10 cattle into it, and it's there and it's open for everybody to see. Yeah, and you've documented this. I mean, you went around, you, you dedicated two years of your life, you and your wife, to traveling around, going, finding these trees and, and taking photographs of them and talking about them and making the awareness for this. I'm not sure about the dedicated two years. <laughs> we fitted that into some other okay. fun traveling. I suppose you got it. Yeah, fun <laughs> traveling. And, 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 and somehow you've got, to, you've got to keep making money through all of it, don't you? We have to <laughs> live. We have to live and eat. But we're in the fortunate position where we can travel significantly. So it helped us getting around. And uh, we had great fun photographing yeah. the trees. As I said to you off air, some of the photographs ended up being really poor. Yes. So we had to go back with them. So whenever anybody reads the book and sees that we've traveled almost 40,000 kilometers. It's not because we're that bad with directions. We just had to go back some, to some of these trees. Yeah. And uh, in most cases, it was actually good fun to be back with a tree. Now, I cannot believe that five years ago, or even any of my corporate, ex-corporate colleagues watching this program would say, you trees, fun, uh-uh. Doesn't sound doesn't right. Sound like it, it does not sound right at all. Well, that's why. I mean, tell me, what, what happened? What, what, why the big change from a corporate guy to suddenly um, resigning, jumping into a car with your wife and, and traveling around and doing all of these things since 2009, but finding a passion in trees? Where did this start? We just got to a point saying that there is more to life than the corporate world. And we managed to opt out. We managed to survive getting out of the corporate world and survive being together 24-7. <laughs> and then we, we continued traveling. We loved photography. We loved traveling the subcontinent. And uh, we ended up uh, photographing bird life and wildlife on yeah. the subcontinent until this uh, project came up where the Department of Forestry keeps this list of champion trees and uh, has no record of it. And as we speak to people, the information dwindles, which is why we're trying to get to the point of publishing the book, which we've done now, um, to leave a record of our champion trees, spread the awareness as we do shows like this or being honored by uh, people like yourself uh, presenting their story to the country. 
and going out on road shows, telling people about the Champion Tree Project, telling people about them being able to nominate additional champion trees and that going through a process with forestry who owns the list to in fact protect them and increase the awareness and the protection of our natural heritage. Which is so it's so vital, it's so important, and you know, once something like that's gone, it's gone. You can never ever get it back. But let's let's start a little bit of a competition here in travelling the whole of South Africa, looking at the different provinces. Who's got the champion trees? I mean, where, where where would you find in South Africa the best place to go and look at some of our exotic, most spectacular trees? When one looks at the history behind a number of these trees, you find that the conditions had to be exactly right for the tree to grow, protected, well watered from natural sources, and also protect against the elements and, of course, urban development. So we find that in the Kalahari and in the Free State, there are limited opportunities simply through a lack of water. Um, although one of the most magnificent baobabs stand in Swartwater near, uh, near the Limpopo River, which is a fairly arid environment. And we've just seen, mostly down the east coast of the country and down on the Cape Peninsula, due to the um, settlement of humans there in 16-whatever, and uh, we find that there were the first trees that were planted. And that is where, that's where one finds most of these. However, people on farms, farmers, you know, a third of these trees are on farms be it wine farms or be it uh, plantations. And they can nominate trees that they know are there that nobody else knows about. And just carrying forward the protection of our natural heritage. That's fantastic. Just finally, is is it true that South Africa is the only country on the uh, the continent that actually records and protects very large and very old trees by legislation? I was impressed when you made that comment because yes, it is indeed. It is indeed the only one on the African continent. There are very similar projects in the US, in uh, Europe all over, in Australasia a couple, and that's where we learned the lesson and started this project in, or Department of Forestry started the project in 2005 or 2003, and it is still the only one on the continent. And we're hoping through our travels to meet with influential people who actually carry this message out to our neighboring countries, saying getting the governments there involved in protecting their special trees, their large trees, back to the heritage so that our children's children, our grandchildren and even their children can enjoy the magnificence of our great champion trees. Well, listen, thanks to you and your wife for documenting it. It's now there. It's in paper form, beautiful coffee table book that you can purchase at bookstores around the country. Is that correct? It's available in all of the leading bookstores, and it's also on our website, championtrees.co.za. There's a Facebook page, like I think everybody has one, uh, where you can have a look at it and get out and buy the book and support the project. No doubt going to be a very popular choice amongst the people coming to this conference uh, to pick up a copy of this book and keep it for them. So thank you very, very much for joining us and well done on the job. Uh, Enrico Liebenberg, the co-author of this book, Champion Trees. Thank you very, very much for being our guest. Let's take a break. When we return, uh, we're going to be talking to some of our our, our youth, I suppose, uh, fighters when it comes to yeah, our youth environmental fighters. One of them being Ella Bella, who is uh, not only in her own right one of the UN champions for this, but also uh, working with the Miss Earth campaign. And we'll be chatting to them after this. Stay tuned.